A viewer has asked that I speak about essential meaning, or say more about essential meaning at any rate. I've spoken several times about essential meaning and did a little video as part of my love letter to a dying world series, the second video. Um, gave a little demonstration on how to directly perceive essential meaning, um, etc. It's a pet uh, subject of mine, so I'm more than happy. Um, what I want to do today is not focus so much on what essential meaning is and all the theory behind it, but to focus more uh, on the direct perception of essential meaning, which is a fairly simple um, thing to do. Um, so I'll, I'll sort of summarize what essential meaning is. Essential meaning is the root of everything. Everything in our experience speaks its meaning to us through its form. Its form, the form of everything, just shouts out its essential meaning. And all communication, human and otherwise, is the transference, the expression of essential meaning, not the meaning that words convey, but the essential meaning that comes from inside. This is what we express when, this is what I'm doing right now, talking to you. I am trying my damnedest to express an essential meaning that is infinite in scope, as all essential meanings are. Uh, we need to compress it and condense it into a little uh, reflection of the root essential meaning as we communicate through words. And as other animals speak to each other, they speak the language of essential meaning. They signify that expression through sound, like humans do, but it's the essential meaning that's communicated between animals. And that's how humans can speak with animals through this language of essential meaning, through this language, which is the universal language, since everything communicates itself, expresses itself as essential meaning, when we get to understand and recognize essential meaning, the presence of essential meaning, it makes for much easier communication, and we can speak to animals, we can speak to flowers and trees and anything. You know, it is the root of true communication, the true universal language. Language of the angels, the language of the birds, you know, it's had all these different names throughout our history because it's always been with us. Okay, so <clears throat> the key is form. Every form expresses uh, the, the thing's essential meaning. Okay? For example, this yellow star. It expresses itself to you when you see it, it affects you, it changes you, and it's that instant. When you first see the, the yellow star, that it affects you. It's, it has an indescribable effect on you, just viewing it. That's the form, shouting its essential meaning at you. Then we go to the obsidian sphere. Now this has a very different presentation. It affects you very differently than the yellow star. And it's in the difference here between the two, between the obsidian sphere and the yellow star. The obsidian sphere and the yellow star in the obsidian sphere. The difference between the two highlights differences in essential meaning and your perception of essential meaning. It's instantaneous, it happens without words, and it's just right there. And that happens in all of our perceptions, 
Every perception perceives this communication of a central meaning. But it goes by so quick that we hardly notice it. <clears throat> now, we'll look at a coffee cup. Totally different. It affects you differently. This is the essential meaning of coffee cup. Now we go to this quartz sphere. Again, a very different affect. You know, it's just so totally different from the coffee cup. And then we go to the red box. Now here it's, again, very different. It affects you differently. This is its essential meaning. And then we go to a stone I found on the Russian River. It's a little geode. Now this, again, is very different. And go back to the yellow star. And it's just so different. This is the essential meaning. And we see here differences in the essential meaning of each one of these things. We go back to the obsidian ball, the obsidian sphere. And then we look at the geode. Now, they're both round balls, obsidian sphere, geode, obsidian sphere, geode. They're different, but they, they still have, they share a type of essential meaning in there. So essential meaning is very multifaceted. There can be similarities, but there are always differences, and sometimes they can be very subtle. We'll go now to the quartz sphere. And again, the obsidian sphere, the geode, the quartz sphere. The obsidian sphere, the geode, the quartz sphere. Now, all three of these have similarities, but all three of them have differences. Let me go back to the yellow star. Okay. Now, these are just a few objects. You can do this yourself by just looking <laughs> at the objects around you. Look at an object, feel its, its expression of essential meaning, the way that it, its form affects you as you perceive it. Look at another thing. See the difference in essential meaning and recognize its unique essential meaning and go to another form and so on. The environment presents you with infinite opportunities to perceive essential meaning. Now we don't want to, it's not limited just to inanimate objects. Take for example trees. Each one of these trees is different and presents a different essential meaning when you look at it. Its form affects you in a different way and you begin to understand the differences between these species of tree. What their environment does for them, what they do for their environment, it's all spoken here in the essential meaning of each of the trees. Now we can do this with people too. You know, think of each people, each person you know, and look at them and, and see the essential meaning of them as it communicates itself to you and see the difference between each person and how the essential meaning reflects or does not reflect what you know of that person. <sighs> now we can also use this uh, with ideas. Um, my favorite is are the Sabian symbols. These are symbols for each degree, each of the 360 degrees of the zodiac. Um, uh, astrologer in 1925 got together with a clairvoyant medium and saw these images that were then expressed in words for each of 
the 360 degrees. Okay? And so there's 360 phrases. Um, and let me read some of these to you. And you will, s well, let me just read some of them to you. First degree of Aries. A woman has risen from the ocean. A seal embraces her. Now this immediately creates an image in the mind that you're contributing and it has an essential meaning. Try to feel the essential meaning in that phrase. We'll go through a few more. 16 degrees, Gemini. A woman agitator makes an impassioned plea to a crowd. Okay. Fifteen degrees, Sagittarius. A groundhog, out of its winter sleep, looks for its shadow. Again, it presents an image, a little vignette, that conveys a specific meaning. Now, you're contributing to this essential meaning, too. It's not just the words. It's what you do with those words. So essential meaning occurs everywhere there is form. Any kind of form. Every kind of form. Uh, seventh degree of Aquarius. Out of the cosmic egg, life is born fresh and virginal. Again, you know, very evocative of ideas and images which are forms which communicate an essential meaning. Last one here. First degree of Libra. Pierced by a dart of light, a butterfly is made perfect. <clears throat> so, ideas convey essential meaning. Anything we perceive with form conveys essential meaning. Every emotion that we experience conveys essential meaning. <clears throat> Everything in life conveys essential meaning. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> so it, it pervades all of our perceptions, all of our perceptions begin with essential meaning. The initial thing is essential meaning, like the yellow star. It's immediately, pow, you know, it, you have the essential meaning right there. And it's, it's so fleeting um, and so big. It can't be captured by words. So it comes before thought, before words. Um, <clears throat> And it's in every perception. So the advantage of recognizing and taking note of that essential meaning is all of the information that it conveys to us, like the crystal ball. It conveys so much information about quartz crystal sphere. Again, the yellow star conveys so much information about yellow star or red box. <clears throat> Each of these things conveys more information to us, makes uh, our connection to the universe deeper and clearer, <clears throat> more objective. <clears throat> Having had, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Having had this direct experience, direct perception of the essential meaning of the yellow star, when we encounter the yellow star in real life, our experience of it is much wholer. You know, it's much deeper, much more objective. We have fewer of our imposed thoughts in our interaction with the yellow star. 
because we have noted that direct perception of essential meaning. And the same is true when it comes to communicating with anybody, anything, that direct perception of their essential meaning or the direct perception of the essential meaning of the words they are speaking to us, just like we did with the Sabian symbols, has a great impact on communication. You know, communication is much clearer and much more complete when we can recognize the essential meaning behind, you know, what is being communicated to us in these, you know, clumsy things we call words. <clears throat> Listen to some music and bring up this perception of essential meaning. Music, so clearly, uh, you know, expresses its essential meaning. So play with that, you know. Go through the universe, <laughs> per directly perceiving its essential meaning, and you'll find it's a, a much different, uh, uh, richer place than you may have thought. Okay, so I hope that encourages you to go out there perceiving essential meaning in all of its forms. <laughs> okay, till next time. Bye-bye.